Hello, welcome to Flooring Models, and you can probably see right here, we've got the actual suffer. It's now completely done. It's been a fantastic build to do this one. Really enjoyed every single minute of it. Really, all we've got to do now is get it wired to the baseboard, and as soon as we get it on the baseboard, um, then we can get all the wiring up and everything, but we've done testing already, and members, you've probably seen that. Um, but the last, uh, there's probably another four parts of this one to go. So we've got another hour's worth of video to watch, which is basically covering um, the deckling, the weathering, um, some of the other bits and pieces on there, wiring and things like that. And then there's going to be two more parts after that, which will be in time for next week before we go off to Telford, um, where that one will complete that one. And that hopefully gets us up to the stage where if you're going to go to Telford, you can come along and see this one in the flesh uh, and see you with all the electrics and the wirings all done and everything else like that. It's been a fantastic build. Really enjoyed this one. And it's been lovely to do sort of freehand camo um, in the Israeli markings as well, instead of sort of the normal sort of grey pointy ones that I do. So very, very fun with that one. Also, we're quite famous at the moment. Um, some of you may have known we're in um, FX Modeling World again. Um, I did a Canberra. Members, you know all about this one. This is nothing new to you. But we've got in here, this is the Canberra build that I did uh, for them. Members, again, you can see this, but if you are a non-member and um, you've got uh, FX Modeling World, click on the logo, okay, on there, and you can see the video build for this one for free for this month whilst the magazine's out as well. So all the photos you see down here, there's a high def uh, video of this one as well, which is uh, obviously on there. No, actually, I don't think it's high def. It's before we went into HD mode. Um, but as I said, it's a great build and it's also this month's um, FX Modeling World. So if you've got that, you'll see all the details on it. If not, just click on the um, FX Modeling World link that's um, over here. If you're watching this on the site or if you're on YouTube, pop over to the main site, click on that. And I think it is a 120 minute uh, video. It's not a massive one, not something certainly like this one, but it's the basics. But also on that one, I cover things like um, airbrushing, modeling worms um, for doing uh, camo patterns and things like that which you'll see a short clip of that uh, a bit later on anyway I'm going to pop it onto this but if you want to see the full thing then pop over to that. The other thing you might be able to see over my shoulder or probably not if we just wiggle the camera around I've got a load of kits here now I've had a load come in this week um, to be honest, I went a little bit mad. Um, so I've got in the Prowler. Now this is the Kinetic, but it's the uh, Rebox. So I'm gonna do a review of that one in a moment. The inbox review. A couple of weirdo ones. Um, Hobby Boss, uh, underestimated company, I do believe. Everyone sort of, you know, you talk to people, you say, you know, name sort of two or three Airfix um, manufacturers, and they'll tell me I say Airfix, Tamiya, Hasegawa, um, perhaps Trumpeter these days, but Hobby Boss really gets overlooked. So I'm gonna show you a few things about Hobby Boss and the pricing structure these kits have. I know recently we've been talking about some of the other ones, certainly costing a small fortune uh, for kits, especially when you're looking at now, as I said, you know, a 172 kit's 30 pounds, 60 pound for a 148, over a hundred pound for 132nd. Hobby Boss, I'll tell you what, as you'll see in a moment, you'll see all about that one. So we're gonna review that one in a moment in an inbox. Also, we've got the Demon as well of theirs, which is a nice kit. It's only been invaded working in resin before that in that scale, so it's nice to see that one. Um, <clears throat> got the Transil. Now, this is a bit of a surprise to everyone because I haven't told anyone on the site, so this will be the first here. This is my entry, which will be into the uh, airliner and transport group build. So I'm working on this one as we speak. So we're doing that one. <clears throat> I'll show you the box of it, but. Um, I've got this one in purely because I'm being asked a lot to do this particular kit. Now it probably won't be until after Christmas, but I'm going to give you a run through of what you get in the box and the reasons why everybody goes on and on and on about this kit and the reason why it's 100 quid. Okay, so we're going to talk about that one. Um, so what I'm going to do now is clear all this away. We're going to get the reviews all set up and let's have a look in the bags. Okay, so here we are over in the bay. Um, a few of your questions I've had in this week, <coughs> or some from last week as well. Okay, first of all, Phil, uh, I see you use lots of different types of paints. Do you use lots of different types of thinners? Um, to be honest, the only one I use is the Tamiya X20A. I use this for all of mine because it thins everybody's from, okay, if we get them off the top, I've got Valeros here. I've got Citadels, the Games Workshop type ones, it thins in lovely. Then obviously we've got the uh, Guns range as well, so we have no problem with them. And then obviously you've got Tamiya and extra acrylic. And to be honest, and even the Model Master ones, 
we've got over here, it thins absolutely everybody's. I haven't seen anything that it doesn't thin. The only trouble is I know a lot of people use things like IPA. IPA for certainly doesn't like using it on um, the actual Valeros or the extra colours. It turns it to like glue, like to PVA glue. So, and this is the only one that I found works with everybody. So that's what I tend to use it for. <coughs> Excuse me. And also the thing is, if you look at some of my recent builds, I've been using it as a decal setter, uh, setter as well, because it makes them all conform a lot better, especially if they're a little bit thicker. So it's sort of a job in everything. And if you buy in 250 mil like this, it's quite cheap, he says. I've got a little list here for prices. <coughs> Sorry, it's 599 for the big one, which I know a lot of people will say that's a lot because it used to be like £3.50 or something, but it's still a damn sight cheaper than it is buying in the 10 mil or 20 mil pots, uh, something like that. Uh, creative models uh, in the UK have it and then the rest of the world, I think it's a little bit more scarce, but it is coming back in. They had a labelling issue with it, but certainly it is back in. So all my thinners I use, absolutely everybody's now, is li uh, literally X20A for any type of acrylic. When you're talking enamel, stuff like that, then obviously I'll just use a cellulose thinner, uh, something like that. Right, next one up is the kicker. Uh, recently I've been using a lot of um, uh, CA glues and things like that and I've got one here It says, Phil, every time I've used kickers it makes my plane go white. That tends to be certain manufacturers. Now I can't go through the list because I can't remember what it was now but I'm pretty sure Pacer did a kicker uh, and used to spray it on and it makes it go white. Now I had a thing many moons ago where I was doing an aircraft and I used it because I ran out of my usual one which is this one uh, and I sprayed it and it made it go completely white. So we just move these off. <coughs> to give you an idea of how trusting I am, here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, so what you've got here is it comes in a pump bottle, all right, so you've got clear parts, all the rest of it, and you can spray this right over your model just like that, and then you give it a blow, and although it goes a little bit cloudy, you can just give it a rub with your finger like so, and it makes it all clean. So it doesn't go white or horrible or anything else like that at all. It keeps it clean. Now, some of them, as you say, be careful, do it on a test piece, otherwise do it. But this one here is made by Vital, it's Vital Bond, it's called Super Glue Activator, um, and it works on absolutely anything at all. So, any type of CA glues, it will kick it. Tastes horrible on your fingers, so don't lick it if it's on your fingers. And the price for one of these is about £5.50 for the pump one. They do a bigger one, which is like an aerosol form. I've never used that, I've only used the pump one because um, it might be the CFCs or something interfering with the thing. But say, so, this is the one. Again, to be honest, this one comes out of Creative, but I know Models for Sale do it in the UK and there's a few other places. So um, just have a look around and you'll see it in there. But I totally trust this on anything. So it won't white, it doesn't affect decals and it doesn't affect clear parts. So you can literally just quite happily spray this all over your model, okay, and away you go and you won't have a problem with it. It dries very quick. If you give it a bit of a blow, it dries totally, instantly and doesn't affect your model whatsoever. So that's my reason for using that one. He says, just lost a no bomb bay off of that. Okay, uh, next thing up, somebody's asking me about my skinny sticks. Um, where do I get them from? They're me. Uh, I manufacture these, well I don't manufacture these, I have a company who manufacture them for me. Um, and as far as I know, we're the only ones, certainly in the UK, that do it. Um, you, we do them in packs, so you get the fine, the medium, and the coarse. Both packs are then dual sided, so you've got one that's a little bit coarser than the other one, the finer than fine, and then um, obviously you've got the medium has got like a coarser and then a bit of a medium one on there. So you've got six grits in total. We do them in bags of 12, they're 4 95 they last forever, and as you say, they come is in a stick form. If you've been watching my recent builds, you'll know all of this, but they come and they're sponged. Okay, so they're quite flexible and everything else, but they don't peel off like some of them do, other manufacturers and everything else. And you can shape them even more, but they're great for getting in little things. But say, they last a long, long time, so you've got no problem with that. 4 95 or you can have all of them, including the sponge. So we do the little five mil thin sponge, which is great for getting inside intakes into little areas without making damage everywhere. Um, so you can have uh, a pack of each of these, so it's the fine, the medium, and the coarse, and a pack of skinny sponges as well, and the lot is 15 pound, available off of our website. Uh, and also it's available in Sprue Brothers in the US, and there's a few around the UK as well, although to be honest, it's a very new product for us. We've only had it out a couple of months, and a lot of the um, shops we deal with haven't picked on, up on it yet. But hopefully they will, and you'll be able to buy it direct, but certainly you can get it direct from us. Um, usual postage thing supply, it's three pound, it's one pound fifty for orders under ten, and then um, three pound fifty for orders under thirty, free shipping on thirty pound and over. But you probably know that already. Okay, 
Last up as well, somebody was asking me about um, references. Do I get references off the net and everything else like that? Specifically, we were talking about the F-16. Um, to be honest, I spoke about it here, but um, Jake Melfi does these uh, absolutely great in-depth um, books, which have got fantastic references. And although I use this one, obviously it's not got an F-16i in here. It's got every other type of F-16, so you know it's quite common the way they actually are. So he does them on specifically quite a few on the F-16, but also, as you can see here, it's on the weapons as well. And we talk about all the differences between each one. You know, little things these are great for is that um, big mouth and small mouth F-16s, he explains the differences why with the General Electric and the Pratt and & Whitney engine and all those things, as well as certain units and things like that. But as you say, you're not gonna get reference shots like this on the net. But it's great having it all in one place because you can literally just come along then uh, and go through it. Um, but also there's a lot of things for modelers you can pick up on. This is, you know, Jake's obviously is a model maker as well as a photographer as well. Um, so he knows what you're looking for, which is great. So he's done one on that, he's done one on the Phantom. Uh, to be honest, I've only got two here at the moment. Um, I've got the other one, which is on the A10. Uh, and this one was done around about the time where they were changing over to the A10C, which is the new Digital Hawk. Um, so some of these, you have got the upgraded interiors, which show them in here. Um, there we go, for the A10C with the two uh, uh, displays as well. So you have got all very well covered, but again, loads on the weaponry, lovely close-up shots, you know, so obviously for picking out details and things like that, really second to none. It is a, a lovely, lovely book. So well worth the investment. You can either get these direct from him, Sprue Brothers in the US do it, and there's um, lots of other publishers as well. But obviously if you just type in um, Read Air Publications, uh, you'll come up with all the stockists and everything else. But as I say, well worth the investment. And I've had those a while now and use them almost every build I do. Not only for that, but things like seats and stuff like that, because obviously they're all pretty common. Right, so first up for our review is, he says looking around for the, where are we? Let's have a look at, let's start with something a little bit odd. So if we just clear a little bit of space. Okay, back uh, a few months ago, uh, a company called Kinetic, who are very new, um, released a range of kits. Now they've obviously then had uh, Italia approach them and are reboxing them with new decals, obviously new instructions and everything else. But this is actually the original kinetic one um, that was out, I think, around about this time last year. <coughs> so what do you get? Okay, very nice decals. Um, Italia decals tend to be very nice anyway. You never tend to find them out of register and all the rest of it. So you've got some very nice ones in there. Okay, the instructions, as you imagine, are Italian's way of doing instructions. Pretty comprehensive, yet basic, um, but it covers all the necessary ones uh, of opening holes. This particular kit, as you can see, you've got wing fold as well, so it shows the configuration and what you need and where you don't you need and things like that for those particular ones. Now, if you are wondering, because obviously they are the same family, the um, Intruder, which is the two-seat strike or weather strike aircraft, um, is going to be out probably by the time you get this. To be honest, it's, I think it's due out any second now. Okay. Now, first thing that grabs you um, is a real horrible part of the kit, and that is these clear bags. Now, these clear bags contain the clear parts, which for some stupid reason, um, which is beyond me why, they've done the rear canopies as two separate parts. So you have to glue them together like that with a glue mark through the middle uh, and everything else. Now, you do have a bar that runs through there, but that is perilously close to um, the actual clear bits. And if you're like me and like to use a PVA glue, it'll be too flexible, it'll bend and won't stick. So you are gonna to have to use, i.e. a little bit of CA glue, um, or certainly something like that, but then you run the risk of fogging up. So I am by no means a fan of that particular area. Now this bit here was a bit of controversial when it came out for the, uh, in the kinetic boxing of it, because what happened was, they made a bit of a design fault with the kit, okay? And then what actually happened was that they forgot to put on the fence on the underside, this one here, okay, and it's on this one here. So what they've done to get around this problem is um, you get two now, which is uh, quite an interesting way of doing it. So you get, basically, you've got two tops, okay, and two bottoms. So let's uh, work out which way we go. So this is gonna go this way. So, hold on. 
No, I'm talking rubbish here. I thought they'd fix the problem. They obviously haven't. What you've actually got, I'm just making sure they've done it okay on the other bit. What you've actually got is this wing section here. This here is the bottoms, is it? Bottoms or tops? No, yep, bottoms. Okay, of the wing. So you've got a fence here, but you haven't got one here. And honestly, I thought they'd fix this, but obviously they haven't. So um, on the bottom, you've got it, okay, but not on the top. So when you obviously bring this over here, we've got a fence both sides, but no fences on this side. Somebody forgot to put it on. So you're going to have to make a fence. Now, in all honesty, it's a piece of cake. A little bit of one mil plastic card will do the job a trick. But, you know, in theory, it was one of their early kits. And I must admit, I have got my hopes up because I thought they'd fix this. But it turns out they haven't. But what we're talking, we're talking recessed panel lines. Obviously, Kinetic are a new, or were relatively a new kid on the block for kits uh, and bringing them out and they have brought us some lovely lovely aircraft such as um, obviously we've got the Hawkeye, we've now got the Greyhound, um, we've got the Tracker which we've spoken about in reviews before but what you do get is recessed panel lines. Now the only option you've got on this one is the um, American Revel kit which has got raised panel lines which is as old as dogs now but they keep kicking it out but it is an accurate shape. Now I haven't built this one but I have seen people have and it does look a good shape as well so we've got nothing wrong with it there. My only thing is is that the panel lines are quite softly done um, so with washes and that they're not going to stick as well as they would on a Hasegawa kit but certainly looking at it and as you can probably see from that it is going to be an impressive aircraft when it's done especially with the wings folded it will look very very nice. So a quick look in the other bags and we'll just flip through them very very fast. So we've got um, some harm missiles as you would expect pretty common um, nothing exciting there. Interior detail, well obviously we've got a bit of plumbing, we've got a bit of a cockpit part going on there, um, back down the boat. Not too bad, although I do believe Aries now have done a pit for this one. Um, we've got riveting detail, seems to be quite nicely in scale. Again, it's quite soft, so I don't know how it'll stand up to having a wash on it. Fuel tanks, things like that, ejector seats, again, quite nicely detailed. Oh, I hate this. Wheels without hubs in there, so you might want to, you know, perhaps get some resin replacements. I'm sure they're around because obviously the Revel ones are around and they're the same, so you can obviously change that. But you've got the hubs separate to the tyres, and then you get a seam through the middle. Oh, it's a, I don't know what people are thinking sometimes when they design kits because that's a real long winded way of doing it all. Anyway, we've got no obvious sink marks. We've got a couple on little parts. When we say a sink mark, what we actually mean is where the resin. I don't know if the camera will get this but it's a tiny one on the side of intakes. I always look at intakes because if it's going to have it, that's where it will be. But looking at it, we seem to not have the usual giant ejector pin marks that we've been used to Kinetic doing on their F-16s, for instance. So we seem to have got round of that. It, okay, we're not talking it's Hasegawa and all the rest of it, and we're still not talking a cheap kit. This particular kit is... Uh, where are we? Uh, 60 pounds. So we're not talking a cheap kit, but it is quite big. And as you can see, we have got a box full of sprues. Obviously, time would tell how this thing will actually build, but looking at it, you've got everything you need for a Prowler over the Revel one. Obviously, we've got um, quite detailed interior. We've got full wing fold. We've got recessed panel lines. Downside is that canopy is horrible. I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole, but unfortunately there's not going to be a way around that unless by somebody by the time I build it has actually come around with doing a proper one, um, which is you know perhaps a vac form one or something like that. As you see on the old diagram, you get some nice options as in markings. So say the sand one's particularly nice rather than the usual sort of grey, but you could always backdate this one as well and do it for the old one where there used to be like light gold with the white and everything else, which is obviously a very nice marking. So that's that one. So £60. So if you're into your Grumman type things, you absolutely love that one. Now we spoke about before about Hobby Boss. Okay. Kits these days, we've spoken about this, very expensive. Um, and really, sometimes you think, why? Because the kit itself used to be, and I'm thinking going back um, probably only 10 years, you could buy for 15 pounds a 148 Hasegawa Phantom. Now they're 50 pounds, you know, 45 pound. Why? I have no idea, because it's exactly the same kit. Luckily, Hobby Boss, which, let's face it, back in the day weren't exactly brilliant, okay, have really got their act together now. We've got some really nice kits coming down the line for them, and they're doing some quite weird things. So, we've got here their um, Yak 38, which is their answer to the jump jet, which never really got going, um, but uh, it was the way they were going to do it. So anyway, instructions. As you'd imagine, quite comprehensive. Um, it's not going to be uh, a particularly hard kit to put together, this one. 
but we do have a wing fold option so you can cut the wings and have it stowed as well which is a nice little touch uh, and the gear itself it's the same it's quite a, a basic type aircraft but you have got nice weapons fit and everything else a nice little touch is the full color um, sheets here for obviously uh, decal placement as well as colours. All the colours, usual thing, are called out in almost everybody. So you've got Humbrol, Termia, uh, Model Master, Valero, and Mr. Hobby colours, which is quite handy. So nice little touch there. Decals themselves, usually they're nothing exciting you know they don't tend to do full color tails and things like that with hobby boss they tend to be what they are um, but as I say there's lots of aftermarket but that said they're all in register and they're all okay a little bit of advertising on other things so the kit itself what do you get lovely little touch which i do like about this company is all the clear parts are normally either a separate little boxing somewhere or they're nicely protected which is a lovely touch we've got a clear instrument panel which i presume Nope, forget that, you haven't got. Sometimes you get a decal sheet for the backing, but you have it on this particular one. There's two gonna be two versions of this. You've got the two seat trainer and the single seat. Hence, you've got this fret here, which is obviously gonna be the interior parts of the actual aircraft itself. So if we just open up a bag, we can have a look at various panel lines and things. So inside the bag, what do you get? Lovely panel lines, better than kinetic. Uh, well, the camera's gonna pick this up, okay but you can probably see they are very nice, very crisp, very sharp, probably on a par of Hasegawa's. Nice riveting detail, because obviously being Russian, they do like to uh, bolt them together. So you've got plenty of that in there, and they all look to be in register. It all looks very nice. Ejector pin marks, nice and shallow, nothing getting in the way anywhere. They look like they're nicely placed. I can't see any bad placement of ejector pin marks, even in things like the wheel wells down here. We've got no obvious big ejector pin marks in awkward places, which is a nice touch because as I say, usually you get them in wheel wells, things like that, which you're gonna to have to get rid of if you're being a little bit picky. This particular case, we don't. Weapons, again, nicely in bits of foam to protect them, very nicely detailed. So you say you've got your standard sort of IR missiles, your rocket pods uh, and gun pods for that one. The tail, as you can imagine, these are the wings, are quite small, but again, very nice uh, recessed panel lines, very nice riveting, very sharp, very crisp, Okay, and then last but not least, we've got this one here, which has got things like your nozzles and things like that on there. Again, ejector pin marks are not in anywhere particularly annoying or bad. We've got no sinkage marks in anything that I can see as well. So you think, yeah, well, that's all very good and everything, but obviously, you know, this is the thing with these kits, you know, how much is it? This particular kit is £22, okay? So you think, brand new, brand new tooled kit, everything else with it, okay? And all those things, just like that, £22. How much would you pay for somebody else's kit? Probably quite a bit. So anyway, on the same flavour, he says, we're gonna rattle through these a bit quicker, because we're running out of time. We have here, the Demon. Okay, now this was the predecessor to the things like your Phantom and Tomcats and all the rest of it. Very nice, got Felix on it. Anything with Felix on it works for me. Again, the only option you had in this before was resin, okay? So, as you can imagine, nice markings come with this particular one. As I said there, we've got the um, VF31 with Felix. Okay, you've also got the Black Lions, and then I do believe that will be the Freelancers. Yeah, Freelancers, VF21, okay. So some nice classic lines to that. So if you are got your old naval aircraft, you'll love this one. Nice big colorful tail, everything else like that. But as I said, usual thing. Nice collection of decal sheets. Instructions, as you'd expect. No real worries with this one running through, as we can see. But what we do get with this particular kit, which is a very nice option. Not only very nice fine recessed panel lines, absolutely everywhere, very crisp, okay? <coughs> but we also get, where is it, in here, a little separate box just down here with our clear parts, again, separately wrapped in foam, very nice, but also photo etch as well. So we've got photo etch for the um, little bars that are gonna go on top of the wings. We've also got them for the speed brakes underneath, engine ones and things like that. Very, very nice touch. We've also got a little clear sprue down here for things like lights, huds, uh, and things like that. So as you go through, you've got these very, very nice, very nicely detailed areas. Again, certain things are covered to protect them. Nice touch. All the flaps, recessed panel lining again, right the way through. Because of the jet, obviously, you know, there's no um, composites on this aircraft back in the day. So it's lots of riveting, which will look lovely when it's all been weathered up and everything else like that. Again, very no sign of flash anywhere whatsoever. 
some quite nicely detailed weapons are okay, they're basic, but you know, there's not so many things you can do to a sparrow or a missile or a sidewinder. Okay, but they are absolutely fine. So we're just going through nice pi piping inside the wheel wells, things like that. Again, some nice riveting. And again, a couple of ejector pin marks inside the doors uh, for the gear, but nothing that would be too hard to take care of. So again, very nice kit. Again, looking at the price of this particular one, 35 pound. You know, 148 kit, it's quite a big kit. Don't get this wrong, when this thing's got the nose on it, we're not talking small, it's gonna be a nice big kit to work with. So I really am saying on this one is, if you're looking for, you know, you're thinking the hobby's getting expensive and out of hand and all the rest of it, then obviously, you know, turn your attention to companies like Hobby Boss. They do do quite a nice range. I've got them down here, just down out of view down here. I've got their Aardvark, I've got their F4, and obviously I've got their A10. Their A10 in 148 scale, if you wanna see the video build, I did that one, um, is a lovely kit, you know? And as I said, I think they're just very, very much overlooked. So there we go. The only one we've got left to really show you, if you haven't seen it already, is this one. Now, at the end of scale, you've got huge amounts of money. This kit is gonna set you back on the net. You can find it for around about 90 pounds, okay? If you have a good look around, probably some of the shows, you might be able to find it cheaper, okay? This is their legendary now Mustang P51. Now, I'm not gonna bore you to death with all about this kit because everybody's spoken about this particular one, but needless to say, it's a massive engineered. It goes together extremely well. It's very, very nice presentation. We've got everything from photo etch palm Parts, obviously decals, you've got um, die cut masks for it, um, obviously you've got various markings, we can do it in as well, and on the other side, no, not on the other side, usually are, <clears throat> but in here, and as you can imagine, if you've seen our Tamiya one go together, apparently this one goes together even better. Again, this one comes on a stand, so I'm not going to go and bore everyone, because you've probably seen this 100 times on the net, recessed panel lining, perfect in every way, some nice crew figures, Obviously this one's got the open engine with the magnets again, which is why you get these parts here. You can have magnets will go on the inside and these are all the cowl areas and things like that. So you can show the engine off. Down in here, as you expect, you've got all the goodies. So we've got our clear parts. Okay, so in here you get different types of canopy for the different versions. Okay, and then you've also got photo etch parts for your seat belts, various engine items, things like that. Metal pins for the undercarriage and whatnot. Again, more tools, screws and things, because this one you can have the gear up or down and it's movable. The obligatory rubber tires and all those things. So I said, it's, it's one of those kits where if you're gonna build one kit in your life, and um, you know it's gonna to fall together, okay, then go out and buy one of these, because yes, it's 100 quid, yes, it's a lot of money, but the engineering that goes into this one and the time it will take you just to build something like the Merlin engine, for instance, will take, you know, weeks to do if you're gonna take your time and do it nicely and it will just fall together. As I said, I've done the Tamiya Spitfire, and this is on the same ballpark with it. Again, you get a stand so you can have it in flight, up or down, and everything else. So I'm not gonna bore you to death, apart from, yes, it is expensive, but is it worth it? Yes, it's probably worth it, because it uh, is fantastically engineered, beautifully done, and everything else like that. Are we gonna build it? Yes, we are, we're gonna have to do it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do this one after Christmas, though. Got a couple of more to get going, uh, to take us up to Christmas, and then probably in the new year, we'll start on this one and we're probably going to do it in metal finishes and things like that to make it really really nice. The only last thing we're going to talk about is this month's Airfix World comes with a free calendar which is quite nice because it's got the artwork from the new kits. So you've got all the nice pictures up there so if you need a calendar for your old hobby room wall then uh, get yourself a copy because you get this free in it which is quite nice because you've got all the old ones and also there's some interesting topic data down on the side but this artwork is absolutely gorgeous it's back to like Airfix used to do okay nothing ever shoots anything down anymore you might notice all the bullets always deliberately missing so where it used to have like things on fire and crashing obviously because we're politically correct these days i'm sure he just happened to have an engine fire and it wasn't shot at um, but there we go, there is some absolutely beautiful artwork, very, very nicely done uh, and everything else. So if you want to get a nice calendar, and as I say, it is a freebie with this month's uh, FX Modeling World. 
So okay, that's it really for this week. Obviously next week there's no new show because we'll be setting up on Friday at Scale Model World Telford. Please come and say hello to us. Remember, members, come along, make yourself be known. Um, and then obviously I've got a free goodie bag that's going to go out to anyone. Um, I won't show you because it will be a surprise you're in. But there will be a couple of nice little bits in there and it is free. So it's well worth coming and saying hello. As I say, me, myself, Hans, Mel and uh, Marcus Jellyman will be there on our stand and obviously milling around. You'll be able to spot us because we have our nice t-shirts on and everything else. So please say hello. Um, obviously, the suffer will be up this week and next week as well. Although I'll say I won't be doing a new show, um, but it will be up as well, which will complete that build and everything else. So, if you want to see me, the team, the suffer, and some of the other builds we've done, we'll see you at Scale Model World this week. Till two weeks' time, then in a fortnight, we'll see you back and we'll do some more reviews work. So, I've got some more kits to go through, and we're going to be getting on with the next build.